Good morning, Dr. Song. Me and my teammates, Christopher and Kantan Raj, will be presenting regarding anime culture. My name is Nur Shahida, and I will start with the introduction. So what is anime? Anime is a style of animation originating in Japan, which mainly targeting adults fewer and was identified by Napier 2001 as a product of Japanese popular culture. Greetings, Doctor. My name is Christopher Analaki G. Agnello Rataram, and my student ID is 2018-00206. Today, I'll be presenting our group topic, which is the anime culture. And I'll be presenting uh, one of our parts, which is the obsession of anime. This time, which marks the end of childhood and start of adulthood, can be extremely stressful. As a result, anime, especially anime set in dystopian locations with happy endings that do not represent reality, serves as an escape for teenagers explaining their fascination with the culture. Many anime enthusiasts are attracted because they like characters in their favorite series. They choose to draw it, act like it, dress like it, and etc. They are typically young, visually attractive, and have desirable characteristics such as courage, dedication, and an optimistic attitude. These characters full of optimism and faith in themselves also re relate to adolescents and adults who are timid, inactive, and insecure. These, I mean, the leads of the anime function of an inspiration for these individuals by Leffler 2021. Next, I'll be presenting my other part, which is the findings and analysis of culture. The positive effect of anime on today on teenagers are that they use animation to elevate and release stress, especially psychological stress. Second, Japanese anime will still instill in young people a deep will to succeed in the face of adversity. Many heroes in Japanese anime have tenacious battles and never give up their will. This will motivate them to uh, persevere and overcome any obstacles in their lives. For example, my hero Academia Izuku, uh, Midoriya and Demon Slayer Tanjiro always come through regardless of hardship and pain that was caused by their enemies. Next, young, young people's team, consciousness has led them to value teamwork and collaboration. There is no shortage of teamwork among the protagonists in many Japanese anime. Young people have learned how to cope with social relationships and cooperate with others as a result of their knowledge of these works, which has, which has had a significant effect on the development of youth team awareness. Next, Japanese anime with rich subject matter, well-crafted stories, and a focus on young people's psychological needs has a strong appeal among them. When there is good, there is bad. And this involved the negative influence of anime, which has led to some adolescents being addicted to it and finding it difficult to break free. This is because there are many bad habits in Japanese anime characters. Some children, due to lack of judgment and cognitive capacity, consider or even mimic them. There are numerous scenes of abuse, blood, and pornography in Japanese anime, which have a negative effect on young people's physical and mental health. Any anime stories contain negative themes such as hate, suffering, envy, anger, depression, and even sexual exploitation and nudity by Sen and Ron. That's all from me, Doctor. Thank you. Hello there, my name is Kandan Raj and I am going to present about the historical evaluation of anime. The initial instances of Japanese animation can be found in 1917, when the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923 damaged Tokyo and nearby areas. The anime industry had to build from zero scratch. Modern anime started in 1956 and was very successful when it peaked in 1961, when Osamu Tezuka, a pioneering figurine in modern manga, founded Mushi Productions, which is a dense and novelty-oriented Japanese comic style and was a major contributor to anime aesthetics. Current international responses and business trends indicate that the anime sector is still a major contributor to Japan's economic development. Now, as you can see, 
shown in the poster. Animation in Malaysia started with a simple animation that was done for documentaries in 1946 by the Malayan Film Unit, MFU. They produced the first animated short film, Kaya Sang in 1978. Due to the emergence of Japanese shows, where more and more Japanese drama and animation were being found to occupy the time slot, it was prevalent in the 1980s. And due to the incline in imports from the West of animation programs in modern times, the Japanese animes have begun to assert a stable place in the Malaysian TV sector. And currently, anime is easily obtainable and accessible in Malaysia, such as through YouTube or Netflix, and has gained popularity. It's still gaining popularity. So I will now present regarding the effect of anime. So the influence of anime culture on Japan has been so strong that it has given rise to otaku subcultures such as role-playing, computer games, and cosplaying. So now, we will explore the effect of anime in different aspects such as in terms of um, value and principle. So for um, aspects of value and principle, young people are easily affected by the character in the animation and if the character possess a good value such as always being truthful and help people in need or always are brave, you know, they will implement the anime character characters into their own personality. Because when we like a certain character, we will try to be like them. They, they be like some sort of like our role model. So um, in such terms, we would um, try to mimic whatever that we can so that we can be just like our role model. So in that way. And then um, secondly, in the aspects of belief, uh, we have observed that entertainment in general has helped shape our views on, um, for example, gender roles, uh, self-confidence, sexuality, and even the, re even the religion itself. People who are non-spiritual are more likely to watch anime genre of action fantasy rather than genre of spirits. Um, so if you like, uh, if you are into or if you are just religious and are into spirituality, you will tend to watch um, anime with the same genre as your belief because that interests you more. When we watch something that that um, that is the opposite of what our belief is, um, for example, people who are non-spiritual, they, they don't believe in God, and, and they watch an anime genre that... Um, that has the plot of um, God, they will not pay much attention to the enemy as much as people who are, um, in who are religious. So, it is quite hard to separate our belief systems and anime in that way, and um, our belief affects um how we experience the enemy, and how the enemy are able to affect our belief system. And next. Uh, what we have concluded from behavior and the important aspects of life is that too much indulging in watching anime or liking anime too much will affect someone's social skills as they rather watch anime than hanging out with their friends. However, if healthy boundaries are created and followed, um, for example, like we can use the anime gatherings um, such as Comic Fiesta Festival or you just join a club, a university club, anime club or um, Japanese culture club um, to socialize and find new friends that shares the same interests and hobbies as you. Even though um, liking something regardless of whatever it is, whether it's um, anime or non-anime, liking too much is not good. If it prevents us from um, socializing, missing out with the real world, it, it will be bad. So even if you like anime, as long as you 
have healthy boundaries, it'll be fine. And um, yeah. And then uh, we'll be moving on to the influence of clothing in anime. So um, the influence of clothing in anime, it was mostly influenced by tales um, about teen life and drama which are prevalent in anime narratives and the character often wears um, school uniforms in kawaii dress. So kawaii, um, if being translated, means cute. Mm. And then since the 1990s, Fruit Magazine has captured Japanese streetwear in Tokyo's fashion district of Shibuya and Harajuku, as well as the Japanese fashion trend the Kora, which has become the foreign face of Harajuku fashion. This style contributed to commercialism of anime and Japanese pop culture and serves as a platform for self expression for them. Another fashion trend that are famous among young people are Kogal, which are known as more traditional subset of kawaii fashion that focuses completely around the school uniform look. Now that is in Japan. Now what it, what happens in Malaysia? So in Malaysia, okay, the adaptation of cosplaying in Malaysia is that since Malaysia is a very conservative nation, um, in a country full of various religions, ethnicities, with 60% of its population are being um, a Muslim, and even though Chinese rule the cosplay culture, it is common to witness Muslim cosplayer as an um, activity as well to use the because cosplaying mostly since um cosplaying is like mimicking the clothing style of any anime characters that we like, and and since it's in Japan, they don't actually really um cover their body, you know they they don't wear hijabs. So um for the Malay sorry for the Muslim Muslim people who are into cosplaying they um how how they because they, they want to join right because I, I wanna cosplay too but the cos the, the anime character that I want to cosplay is not um it's not appropriate for my religion because they showed skins and I cannot show my skin. So what I do I will um in a way, <laughs> I will uh, some sort of like a modify the clothing so that it will fit into um, my religion type of clothing. And um, one of the popular hijabi cosplayer, her name is Masha Erika Diana, has adapted the cosplaying into something that a Muslim woman can also participate in. So, um, in this way, everyone can cosplay um, when you are Muslim and when you are non-Muslim. So anime, and, and in that way, um, we can find people who are sharing the same interests as ours and we can make connection from there. And lastly, um, I will go through the terms of marriage aspects. For um, okay, in Malaysia, there are no such obsession about marrying the character, the anime character in Malaysia. But however, in Japan, a guy named Akihiko Kondo married an anime character named Miku and had an official marriage ceremony with 39 guests on December 2018. And the company that made um, Akihiko hologram of Miku starts issuing unofficial marriage certificate and about 3,700 cu customer took up the offer which means um, Miku has about 3,701 husband and anime character um, since they, they bought the unofficial marriage certificate, they technically married to the character. Um, there are no yet information regarding um, how many among them have um, have 
have unofficial marriage ceremony but what we do no one of them has and that obsession in Japan is um I mean the obsession between um between Japan and Malaysia regarding anime Japan is quite worse so so theoretical mm. analysis first I will explain what is very fourfold's theory so very fourfold's theory consists of four separate boxes which is assimilation integration separation and marginalization assimilation is where someone from different culture adopt the cultural norm of the country or region that they have moved to integration is where people adopt both of the dominant culture and their original culture and combining the two at the same time separation is when someone rejects the dominant culture and keep the culture of origin instead. Lastly, marginalization is when someone rejects both of their original culture and the cultural norm. So, does Malaysia accept the culture? No, because a study that was conducted by Yamako in 2013 shows that participant description of anime is that they contain mostly excessive nudity and sexual behavior and it was for kids and not suitable for mature adults. And um, thus, anime fans or otaku was understood as someone who is obsessed and spend a lot of time consuming the manga or anime. And it makes them unsociable and do not have social life. So these negative representations in Malaysia and in Japan were the same. Uh, in Malaysia, it rejects the culture, so which makes it fall under the separation theory because of the stigma of the culture itself. However, now we are in integration theory, which they are now adapting the culture. Such could be seen that there are anime and Japanese club created in um, high school and university. Uh, as much as events such as Matsuri Festival, Cosplayer Competition, Cosmic Co Comic Fiesta, and Annual Bon Odori Festival. Well, in Japan, because of the stigma, they fall under the marginalization theory. However, I believe with time, this will improve and the culture will be accepted. And now, um, there was uh, an um, interview a random interview that was done to ask random strangers regarding their opinion and you can see how they changes from rejecting the culture and slowly adapting it and and this was recorded in Japan so like I said um, even though right now they fall under the marginalization theory with time this will improve and the culture will be accepted Now, for the discussion and conclusion, we can conclude that anime and culture has strengthened the relationship between Malaysia and Japan. And this can be seen by the long collaborative relationship between the National Academy of Arts, Culture and Heritage, Aswara, with the Embassy of Japan in Malaysia and the Japanese Foundation, Kuala Lumpur, JFKL. Now, together, they have organized many successful cultural events, especially in 2017, in conjunction with the celebration of the 60th anniversary of Malaysia-Japan diplomatic relations. Now, among the activities held were the kimono lecture and demonstration by Nobaki Tomita, a kimono stylist, and a no theater workshop by Sochiro Hayashi. Aswara has also collaborated with the One Asia Joint Concert Executive Committee for the Japan Malaysia Music Festival, a traditional music performance. In the recent interview, Aswara Rector Professor Dato, IR Dr. Muhammad Rizon Johari, and the Center for Postgraduate Studies Deputy Dean. Dr. Wong Oimin discussed the academies of Japan, 
Malaysia Art and Cultural Exchange programs, as well as how Malaysia might benefit from some of Japan's values and ideals. Now, as you can see from the poster shown, animation can be a strong business weapon, but it's also important to note that the nation's history and personality can be shared through its lenses. In the keynote speech in 1994, Neil McKee and George McBean warned that the kid of the future will spend more time in his formative years enjoying animated cartoons on TV, then it will spend later in life on a college education, which is true. Entertainment sells because it is the most effective way to cater to the feelings of that manage influence decisions. We must appeal to certain feelings in order to penetrate directly into the belief structures upon which we base on our lives. This is precisely the role of animation that has played for more than 80 years around the world and will continue, still continue to play for the future generations. Thank you.